So, if you have to abandon ship, a couple of really important things to think about. Once it is inflated, you pull or winch the life raft to the stern of the boat. There may be a fire on the boat, yeah. there could be debris in the water. Everything you do from then on, you need to be thinking about protecting yourself. Today is all about life rafts and we have just purchased a new one which got delivered a couple of weeks ago when we were in the UK so I'm just off to pick it up now. We figured we would go for something a little bit better that uh, is modern, has all the relevant safety equipment on it that we could need for an offshore passage. Let's go and see the new life raft which I think it's a little bit bigger than our old one, so let's see how I managed to get it on board Esper. Should be quite interesting. Jesus, this thing is heavy. <laughs> it's really heavy. Um, not quite sure how much heavier it is than our last one. It's slightly bigger. Uh, interesting to see, I didn't know this, but it comes with its own hydrostatic release, which is what that is. Let's keep the instructions so that we know what we're doing with it and how to install it properly. <laughs> so we've got to get this one on the boat and work out exactly where we're going to put it. So I got the life raft as far as the pontoon gangway, but the tide is out at the moment, so it's a bit of a slope. I'm on my Todd, there's no one else to help because Liz has gone into town to do some shopping. So I'm gonna wait now until that is uh, level so I can get it at least down to the boat, if not on the boat, and of course get the old one off. I'm trying to work out exactly where to put it. Now, there's been quite a lot of discussion on where we put the life raft. Uh, Quite a lot of people you'll see will mount their life raft on the outside of the push pit. And we've been recommended that this is not a good idea in case of following seas, of breaking waves, taking it out. Um, I, but you, you want it to be at the back of the boat. So putting it in the middle of the boat by the mast is not a great idea. It needs to be somewhere where you can get to it quickly. I think... Um, I could be wrong in suggesting that when boats sink, they'll tend to sink with the bow going down first. I'm not sure about that. That might be absolute rubbish. Uh, but we want to put it somewhere where it's secure, but um, easy to deploy. So ideally, I'd like to mount it on its side. So I'm trying to work out how to put it somewhere by the push pit, not necessarily secured to the push pit, but secured so that it doesn't roll around. So anyway, that's a little conundrum to consider and, and work out in, in the longer term. Right, so I think today I'm gonna to finish off the wiring of the solar panels and I'm going to expose the panels on the top of the Dodger because those are the only panels that we have on the boat at the moment. As you know, we've got to go and pick them up uh, in Pancor, the remaining panels. So I should at least wire these four up. We've run the cables, the MPPTs are in place and it's just a case of putting a, some kind of uh, bus bar in. Um, and um, yeah, it, hopefully that is all it should be required to get those panels up and running. So two fitted monitors and put the speaker back together and I should just like to give a shout out to American who very kindly brought over from China this 12 volt uh, brushless drill my old Makita batteries are dead so he got his girlfriend to bring this over for me so thank you very much American came in very useful for this job and just for you 
I thought I would keep the little plastic covers on the screen because I know you love keeping those on to protect your screen. So before we start talking about the new life raft, we just want to say thank you for all the fantastic comments that we received on last week's video. Amazing. So many of you got lots of experience of climbing into life rafts, doing sea survival courses, and uh, we really appreciate your feedback because we learned a lot. We did. One of the comments that came up quite regularly was that you should step up into the life raft. I'm just going to read one right now. This comes from Kay Yeager who says, you tie the line to a cleat or a winch, I prefer the latter. Then you chuck the case into the the water and wait for it to inflate. Once it is inflated you pull or winch the life raft to the stern of the boat and proceed to load your grab bags, cat, wife, not necessarily in that order, through the hatch quite comfortably. Finally you board the raft yourself from the swimming platform and once aboard cut the line which keeps the, la the raft tied to the boat. Quite easy really, no stress, no strain. Right, I wonder if that comment was written based on experience of a real life situation <laughs> because we've been speaking to people and a couple of people who have actually got first hand experience of this comfortably and stress free are not words I would consider describing those situations that have been described to us. Mm -hmm. um, yes, of course, you should remain composed, that's very important. But I think the, a lot of these comments have, have missed a couple of points and the first is that you're not always going to be stepping up into your life raft from your boat. In there a nice are, flat sea, in a nice Well, day. no, there are situations where mm. you may have to pay out your life raft away from the boat. There may be a fire on the boat, yeah. there could be debris in the water, your rigging could be dragging out the back of the boat. So you need to actually push that life raft away from the boat. Yeah, it could be a really quick hit as well and you could be sinking really fast. you just got to get off. Yeah. So it's really important. Plus, of course, I think it would have looked a bit daft us climbing off the side of the swimming pool straight into life raft. It wouldn't make for a very interesting video. Mm. So uh, we wanted to get a feel for what it was actually like getting into it from the water. And in fact, sea survival courses will also do this, as well as blasting you with lots of cold water through a fire hose and uh, with wave machines and, and what have you. So. Another point that came up frequently was the fact that the grab bag floated away and it was difficult with Millie falling out when we turned the life raft upside down. Uh, a few people have said attach a lanyard to the painter itself so that as you're going out at least you've got those two things attached to the painter as you are as well and um, Al Smitherman said maybe tie lines on your grab bags and tie off to the raft before pitching them inside then if it does come out it will be attached to the raft and won't drift away so if the raft goes over at least everything is attached. Mm, I think this is something they actually suggest that you do in sea survival exercises and Kevin our search and rescue pilot friend who spoke in quite quite big detail about tactics had also suggested this as well as half filled jerry cans of water as well to tie them to the side of the life raft rather than put in, trying to put them inside and then tipping out and you losing them. Stop. Oh. Fuck, is there windows open down there? Yes, they're all open. Uh, sorry about that, we had to cut short because a big storm came through and then we realised, well, it doesn't matter because we are in our new Dodger, which is all round waterproof. So we can continue. There were so many comments and we've tried to answer as many as we could in the first 24 hours of publishing the video, but thank you to everyone. We're still reading all the comments and we really do like the feedback. It's, uh, it's invaluable to us and hopefully is a resource for other people interested in the subject as well. And the reason why we launched that raft was because we have a new one, which we're about to talk about. But before we do, we should thank a very important anonymous benefactor who stepped in to buy us our new life raft and that is why we're able to play around with the old one. So first of all a massive thank you to those people and you know who you are, really appreciate it because we don't have the funds to be buying these kinds of pieces of equipment um, because they are expensive and I think uh, you know we're not going to do this journey until we're fully equipped yeah. and this could have delayed our um, departure by another year as we saved up for this new life raft so this has helped us uh, move along and we really do appreciate that thank you okay so 
new life raft. Yes, so we had to really have a good look around, see what's available and what we should be looking for. Um, our first port of call was the Royal Yachting Association's website, the RYA. They have a whole section on safety at sea and they do give some guidelines for uh, life rafts. You can read it in full but um, the gist if, of it is that uh, these are what you need to consider. Stability, the canopy, the boarding aid, the two compartment, sea, compartment, the two compartment buoyancy uh, provision and an inflatable floor, preferably double. You need all of those things. We had a big problem with our buoyancy, didn't we? Yeah, we talked about that in a bit of detail, how they actually just came off their life. They, they literally just fell off the life raft, and that's yeah. one of the reasons why it tipped over. But uh, this has got lots of notes here. We haven't got time to go through them today, but we'll put a link in the description uh, to this particular resource. Yes, and I'm also going to do a blog, a full blog about it, with all that information on our website. So we'll do that then. Um, and we went for the Viking the Viking Rescue U Pro, it's their top of the range uh, life raft for sailing boats. Uh, we chose it because it ticked every single box and some uh, according to the RYA and the other resources that we use. So we're pretty happy with it. Um, and we also were relieved when we read a comment uh, on last, year's vid um, last week's video from Alistair Dixon who says, as an ex-survival instructor to the oil industry, I would say you get what you pay for. Most professional oil and marine companies use Viking. Quite expensive, yes, but worth it. So that was good. Mm. These are some of the features that the life raft has. I'm just going to read about really quickly. Fluorescent yellow canopy enhancing visibility from a distance. Two separate buoyancy chambers, each capable of supporting maximum cap capacity. Four 55 litre weighted ballast bags for stability. Uh, RYA says minimum of 25. Solus high visibility retro reflective tape on the canopy, the sides buoyancy and the chambers and under the life raft. Automatic Solus US Coast Guard exterior strobe light and interior light. Internal and external lifelines, rainwater collector and base material of strong flexible natural rubber. And the other advantage it has is that it is self writing. It's not supposed to be able to stay upside down, it's supposed to come straight back up again which we could see, you can see you really need. The other thing that we bought to go with it is the Hammer H20. Um, it's oh, that's, that's the little hydrostatic yeah. release that I picked this up in the, the video earlier and, yes. I, and I wasn't quite sure exactly how it worked so yeah. what are the details on that? Well um, we've got quite a lot of details that they sent to us to put up now but basically it releases the life raft if you go down really fast if you're really and you can't get to your life raft in, in time it will inflate automatically between one and a half and four meters below water the water pressure does something to make the whole gizmo work and it it cuts it away from the boat, sends it to the surface and, in, and your life raft will inflate. So in those really stressful situations you've got a chance that your life raft mm. will actually appear. So yeah, we've got one of those as well. And finally we thought we'd save the best bit till last and that is a conversation we had with a search and rescue helicopter pilot. He happens to be our old friend and Patreon, Kevin Berry, and if you regular viewers will remember he actually came out to visit us in Langkawi last year. Kev got in touch and had so much useful information he mm. wanted to give to us and also to you guys. So we sat down and we had a long chat with him. Mm. We're going to publish the full chat as an extra because it makes for really interesting viewing. Yeah. Compelling. But what we thought we'd just do now is just pick up some of the key points from that conversation and play it to you now. But do keep an eye on our channel and we'll publish that extra hopefully in the next day or so. Hi Jamie, hi Liz, uh, great article on the uh, life raft drills, um, it was uh, really interesting stuff, showed people some of the difficulties we can get into whilst trying to use them. I'm presently working as a search and rescue helicopter pilot in Mackay in Queensland, Australia. Uh, we do a lot of uh, overwater rescues um, as well as uh, air medical evacuations and I used to work in the Royal Air Force as a flight lieutenant on the Sea King Rescue Force. Uh, a great job, uh, we did lots of uh, overwater rescues, um, lots of work with uh, sinking vessels, life rafts, uh, that sort of thing. Um, interesting times. The EPIRB only really works its best ability if it's upright. 
Um, and, and if we've got multiple EPIRBs going off, I, everyone's got one on the life jacket and the life raft and the, um, the, the yacht, then that can confuse the issue um, as to what's actually going on. So once you get yourself stable in a suitable situation, I would recommend turning off all bar one of the beacons. Uh, that's going to clarify the situation for um, the Rescue Coordination Centre. Uh, and if it's the vessel's EPIRB, then we know that it comes off a vessel, it's registered, and possibly a little bit more information about what's going on. The first thing that you need to be thinking about is your flares. Um, have your flares easy to hand, ready to use. If you've been in the water in cold conditions for any length of time, that's going to become more and more difficult. So although you do want to run the risk of uh, losing things if you get rolled over, try and keep your flares easy to hand because as soon as you see an aircraft, you want to be putting a flare up so that they can identify your position. Uh, you've always got the day-night devices. Uh, day smoke is fantastic. Uh, you can see that from miles away. It gives us indication of the wind. Uh, parachute flares are great. Uh, and obviously nighttime flares at night. You can see from a mile off. Uh, other great location aids that uh, you may or may not have is during the day, a heliograph is fantastic. Um, it, we can see a flash of a heliograph from miles away. Um, at night, strobe lights, fantastic. They show up on night vision goggles really well. Uh, so if you've got a strobe, use that. Um, a sea marker die can be really useful as that spreads out. Um, so if you've got a couple of sachets of that, then putting that in the water uh, when you're in the raft and you hear an aircraft nearby, uh, then put that in the water, that'll stick out uh, like a sore thumb as well. You need to think about short-term survival and the, the short-term priorities for survival are protection, location, water, then food. So everything you do from then on, you need to be thinking about protecting yourself as much as you can. And, and there's the obvious things from uh, taking seasickness pills before you start in there, keeping plenty of water for hydration, um, not worsening any injuries, getting into a life raft with a broken arm or a busted wrist is nigh on impossible. So protect yourself as much as possible. Uh, once you get into the life raft, uh, again, still think about protecting yourselves. Life raft is probably going to turn over several times in uh, big seas, so don't ditch your life jackets. Deflate them a little bit to assist you, but keep some air in there because chances are you'll probably end up in the water again. Uh, think about the other people around you. How can you protect them? Uh, think about hypothermia. Think about sunstroke, heat exhaustion. Do everything you can to protect yourself in that life raft. Uh, then you need to think about location. Uh, and as I said before, EPIRB is your, your first line of defense after that mayday call. Um, handheld radio, uh, flares, torches, strobes, heliograph, sea marker die, anything you can do to aid your location. Um, don't use all your resources at once, save them. Uh, save them until you've got a reasonable prospect of rescue. Uh, there's no point uh, using everything up in the first three days and then no one's got anything to locate you with when the, the aircraft flies by you four days later. The, the, the main problem with uh, prolonged life raft uh, inhabitation is uh, giving yourself enough water uh, to keep yourself hydrated. So, uh, as other people may have said, uh, get a, a couple of jerry cans, not completely full, uh, and tie them to the side of your life raft. They are going to help you. If you've got a life raft with a reverse osmosis pump, that's great. You can hand pump yourself some water as you go along. Uh, these few things are going to keep you going in the first few days. Uh, hopefully your rescue is going to a little bit quicker than that, but you need to be thinking about this short-term survival. As you can see, we are now out of the marina, but a bit more on that next week, including a roundup of all the last bits and pieces of work we did over the final few days. So, thank you for watching. 
Do remember to comment, like, subscribe. We love hearing from you. In the meantime, peace and fair winds.